Goosebumps Horrorland Has You Loose by Arlstein Part 4 Chapter 14 No, please! Ryan choked out in a hoarse voice. Please believe us. We are telling you the truth. We don't know anything. I cried. Please! I jerked one arm loose from the guard's strong grip. Then I twisted my body hard, trying to free myself from the guards at my other side. But he held on tight. Both guards tightened their grip on my shoulders. I couldn't move. I turned to the duke and the wizard. You have to help us. You have the wrong people. You are making a big mistake. Henry frowned at us and brushed our hand to his white beard. You made a mistake, he said softly. The duke bowed to the headless prince again. We must follow our prince's command, he said. We are all his loyal servants. Prince Warwick is only being fair, Henry said. A head for a head. Can you argue with that? Yes, I said. I started to say more, but a god clapped his hands over my mouth and spin me around. What happened next was a blur of long dark halls, grim portraits of frowning royalty, dizzying twists and turns, flickering torchlights, and the thumping, thumping, thumping of my heartbeat. Every muscle in my body tightened with fear. My eyes blurred red spotted dart in front of me. My legs felt rubbery and weak. I knew Ryan was close beside me, but I was too terrified to look at him or to speak to him. Too terrified to think. And then there we were outside. I felt the heat of the late afternoon sun. Where had they dragged us? I gazed around at grey stone walls. We were on a roof, maybe a roof of one of the castle towers. We were walled in all for car. The surface of the roof was black and sticky like tar. Guard in black and red uniforms stood stiffly against the walls. They resisted the points of their lances on the floor and carried round metal shields in front of them. I saw a wooden platform about two feet tall. Guessed. I guessed. The duke and the wizard stepped to the platform. The wind ruffled their purple robes. The duke's bald head gleamed in the sunlight, and then a man stepped out from a low wall. I knew he was just by looking at him. He was big with a broad bare chest and huge biceps. His legs were as thick as tree trunks, covered in ragged black pants that came down in to his worn black boots. He wore a black mask over his head. I could see dark eyes behind the eye slits. He had a long handled axe grouped tightly in one of his huge hands. He was the executioner and the platform was the chopping block. Ryan pushed up close to me. I could see the goosebumps on his arms. His whole body sh shuddered. That guy, he looks like a comic book executioner, I whispered. But that isn't a comic book. I choked out. I stared at the axe as the executioner swung it onto his massive shoulder and broad blade caught the sunlight and glowed as if on fire. The girl will go first, the Duke of Early said with a wave of his hand. Do you have any last words? Last words? Hot tears ran down my cheeks. Here are my last words. I stammered. Ryan and I have been telling the truth. My name is Scarbone and he is Ryan Cheng. We come from a city called Tampa, Florida. I'm not sure.
but i think we live in the future we are just kids we do not belong here we enough and we shouted we do not have time for fairy tales your story do not convince us girl he gave the executioner a whip chop off her head let justice be served two guards pushed me to my knee then they forced my head over the chopping block please i gasped this will teach you a lesson henry said i could see only the hem of his robe and then the boot of the guards and the tar of the roof where my head would soon roll i felt a whirl of hot air a shadow swept over me as the execution raised his high ax i shut my eyes i held my breath can this really be happening i asked myself about me i heard the executioner groan as he prepared to swing the axe down suddenly i had a desperate idea chapter 15 one last word i screamed give me one last word the shadow of the axe swept over me again as the executioner lowered it to his side the guards loosened their hold i lifted my head from the chopping block my he- heart pounded like thunder inside my chest my head throbbed throbbed my head throbbed could i really do this and we gazed down at me do you have a final word of apology for your crime he demanded i turned to the duke his purple robe flapped in the wind he frowned down at me hands folded in front of him did you say you like to bet i asked him he nodded well yes i have been known to be a wager for time to time i glanced at ryan did he catch on to my plan i could see his face he was surrounded by guards there will be no gambling while we are carrying the princess order Henry said sternly Alfred you have been warned about your gambling again and again I ignored him and kept my eyes on the duke he stepped closer he could see that I had grabbed his interest have you ever bet on a coin toss I asked him a thin smile played over his lips perhaps he replied I took a deep breath could this plan actually work i knew i'd have to use my best acting skills i knew betting too i enjoy it betting too i said would you like to bet on a coin toss the wizard grabbed the duke's sleeve alfred stops at once he snapped the duke step closer he pulled me to my feet his eyes gazed into mine a coin toss he said softly i can never resist a coin toss but i should warn you i celebrately lose the prince will not uh, uh, approve and we scolded it your endless gambling must stop the duke gave him a gentle push out of the way and what is the nature of this bet he asked me eyes flashing simple i replied if you win the coin toss carry out of the executioner chop off our heads he rubbed his chin and if you win the coin toss then you will spare our lives he said enough of this and we barked stop this at once alfred i shall not allow it The duke's smile grew wider. It sounds like a fair bet. I agree to it, he said. But you must know for that I will win. I am very lucky. You are delaying your fate for only a few moments. My hands trembled as I reached into my short pocket. My fingers were shaking so hard. I nearly dropped the gold coin. I held the coin up in front of the duke. Shall I toss it? I asked. He nodded. Proceed. I took a deep breath. 
Then I flipped the coin into the air. Heads I win, I cried. We all watched it come down. It bounced once on the roof, then stuck in the tar surface. The dew cleaned down to see the result. He uttered a groan. Heads, you win, girl. He pointed his fist against the side of his legs. How is this possible? I never lose. He made a grab for the coin, but I picked it up first and stuffed it back into my pocket before he could examine it. Then I pumped my fist in the air. We win! We win! We win! Ryan cried, jumping up and down. But our celebration didn't last long. Henry scrawled at Duke and brushed him out of the way. I'm sorry, the wizard said. His cold eyes locked on mine. But I cannot allow the Duke's foolish vigor to stand. He motioned to the big man beside the chopping board block. As usual, prepare your axe. Chapter 16 No! I shouted. The duke turned angrily to the wizard and stuck out his chest. A wagger is a wagger, he said. Henry shook his head. It was an inappropriate wagger. I do not care, the duke shouted back. My honor is at stake. I must keep my word. And we ran a hand through his thick white hair. I had my fingers crossed tightly. Who was going to win this argument? And we let out a dis disgusted sigh. Very well, be a fool, he snapped at the duke. Spare the lives. Yes, we win, I thought. But then Henry Nor added, Take them to the castle dungeon. After a few days down there, they will beg us to chop off their heads. Huh? Ryan and I exchanged glance. The dungeon? I could feel my heart drop into my stomach. A frightened cry escaped my throat. A few seconds later, the sun disappeared behind us. We were forced down deep, dark, straightways. The stones were damp and covered with slimy green moss. Ryan and I kept slipping on the hard, slick stairs. The guards held on to us to keep us from falling. The air grew wide and so chill after chill shook my body. Deep into the castle, the only sound was our shoes and the guard's boots thudding on the side of the slippery stones. Henry had gone off by himself, but the duke followed us down. He rattled the dungeon keys in his robe as we made our way. Finally, we stepped into the low chamber. I squinted, trying to see. The room was lit by a few flickering candles. Our shoes scraped over crackling draw straws. I stared into the deep shadows and heard the groan and moans of dungeon prisoners. Hungry, hungry, hungry. A hoarse voice repeated, Did you bring me any num-nums? Any num-nums? I heard a scratching sound in the straw at my feet. I jumped as something scrambled over my shoes. A rat? I squeezed Ryan's arms. His whole body was trembling. Guards froned us through a curtain of thick warp webs. I brushed the sticky webbing from my face and saw an endless row of cells. They marched us down the row. I started at the street ahead. I couldn't bear to see the ragged men in their cages sprawled on the floor of the clinging to the bars. My whole body shook as they forced us to the last cage at the very end. The cell bars were rusted black. The floor had thick matted piles of straw. Even from outside I could see fat black insects crawling into the straw. The air felt thick and heavy. I could hear the buzzing of flies. The duke handed the keys to the guards. The guard 
turned a key in the lock and pulled open the cell door. The door squeaked as it slid open. The guards gave Ryan and me a hard push into the cell. Ryan shambled into the wooden bench. I fell face into the straw. Oh, sick! I groaned as prickly bugs crawled over my face. I jumped to my feet, slapping at my cheeks. I brushed bugs off the face of my t-shirt. My whole body started to itch. The cell door slammed. I turned and watched the duke leading the guards away. Hey, come back! Ryan shouted. He grabbed the bars at the front of the cell poked his face out. Come back! How long do we have to stay here? You won your bet. We spared your life. Why are you complaining? You called. Then he disappeared into the darkness. All around us, men howled and shouted in the corner of our cell. I saw the skeleton of a small animal bugged swamped with the bones. Hungry, Johnny is hungry, a more man mourned from somewhere down the low row of the cells. Johnny is hungry, who will feed Johnny? We, we can't stay here, is tempered. We have to get out. Ryan nodded but didn't say anything. He hugged himself, trying to stop the shakes. This is too weird, I mutter. We have to think of something. Suddenly, a face appeared in the cell next to us. A pale, bald man with grey eyes. Sunk deep into their sockets, he opened his mouth and I saw that he had no mouth, no teeth. I am innocent, he said, in a horrible raspy whisper, like chalk on a chalkboard. My name is Innocent. My mother named me Innocent. How can I be guilty? Ryan and I startled at her, him. He didn't know how to reply. He waved a bony hand like a limp white fish. Did you bring me a treat? Can I have my treat now? Sorry, no treat, I said, my breast fingers over my nose. The man smelled like rotten meat. But my name is Innocent, he rasped. Then he spotted a fat black spider on the dungeon floor. He grabbed it and popped it into his mouth. Thanks for the treat, he said. He sank back into the dark shadows of his cell. I shivered. Ryan was still hugging himself. He could see my reflection in his sunglasses. My hair was totally a mess. I smeared a dirt down one cheek. We have to think hard, I said. Some kind of magic brought us to this awful place. Maybe some kind of magic can help us escape. Ryan nodded. Maybe, he said in a tiny voice. The coin, I said. It was the two-headed coin. Down the row, a man began to sing. His voice kept cracking. The song had no melody and the words made no sense. The singer singing made the prisoners shout and howl. One prisoner meowed like a cat. Noise echoed over the cell, low selling. The coin brought us here, I said. I had to shout over the defending howls. Don't you remember? Ryan blinked. You're right, Jessica. It was in the cross on the playground and we were both grabbed for it at the same time. Yes, I said. Our both hands wrapped around the coin and then we began to flip over and over. So maybe we both grabbed the coin again? Ryan said, my heart began to race with excitement. Maybe it would work. Maybe the coin would flip us out of here back to the playground where we had started. I grabbed the coin in my pocket and pulled it out, holding it between my fingers. I raised it in front of us. Okay, grab it on the count of three. I told Ryan, are you okay? ready? One, two. But my hand was shaking so hard, the coin slipped out. No! I screamed as it fell. I swept. 
at it widely. Missed. The coin bounced into the floor and rolled into the thick straw. Oh no, oh no, I mutter. Ryan and I dropped to our knees. I began to stiff through the straw with both hands. Where was it? Where? It's too dark, Ryan mourned. I can't see anything. Keep searching, I said. I swatted a fat bug off the back of my hand. Frantically, I pressed through floor. I turned and searched behind me. I searched until I had made a complete circle, searching with both hands, brushing the scraping straw out of the way. It couldn't roll far, I muttered. It couldn't. Ryan finally sat up. He pulled off his sunglasses. I could see the fear on his face. Jessica, we lost it. We whispered, we lost the coin. Chapter 17 Ryan helped me pull to my feet. I brushed off my legs. I pulled a bug off the front of my shorts. I shut my eyes. I wanted to cry. I wanted to scream. I wanted to howl like the other sad dungeon prisoners. When I opened my eyes, Ryan had a smile on his face. I blinked a few times. Was I seeing things? What? I said. You're smiling. He pointed down to the floor. I lowered my gaze. He was pointing at my left sneaker. I cried out when I saw the gold coin caught in the laces. It didn't hit the floor, Ryan said. It landed on your shoes. I let out a long sigh of relief. Then I grabbed the coin. I held it tightly in my fist. You're not getting away again, I told it. Did the coin have the magic to take us out of here, this dungeon? All around us, Pringle sinners began to shout cheer. They banged their cells, bars, until the noise was so loud. I covered my ears. I saw the ragged man with long, stinky white hair moving cell to cell. He stepped up to our cell. He cried a flat wooden stray stacked with metal bowls. He set it down and pulled out a small ring of keys. Then he pulled out the key in the door and opened our cell. Just wide enough to show a two bowl filled with grey muck. It looked like wet pasta. Feed time, the man muttered. My last stop. Ryan stepped to the door to pick up the bowl. What was we having for lunch? He said to the man. The man squinted at Ryan. Lunch? What is lunch? He asked. Did you find that word in a book? Ryan just shook his head. Don't we get spoons? The man rolled his eyes. Crazy prisoners, he muttered. Spoons? Making up your own words? He slumbered. The cell door shut. We watched him walk away, swinging the tray at his side. Ryan set the two bowls down on the wooden bench. The soup or whatever it was smelled like sour buttermilk. Was this our only meal for the day? I felt sick. I grabbed my stomach. Then I turned to Ryan. He was grinning again. What's up this time? I demanded. His grin grew wide. He reached behind his back and pulled something out of his pocket. I gasped at it in amazement. The footman's keys! Despite my fear, I burst out laughing. He slapped Ryan back. Wow, you haven't lost your touch. When then, when you're good, you're good, Ryan said. He raised the keys and we both stepped to the cell. Let's get out of here, I, I said. I didn't realize how hard that would be. Chapter 18. The keys clattered on the ring. Key ring. 
Brian leaned against the bars and fumbled the key into the lock. He tried and turned it. No, he said, wrong key. There were at least ten keys on the ring. Ryan took the key out. The space between the bars was narrow. His hands barely fit through. He tried the next key and the next my heart pounded hard within each try. One of the, them had to work. I said, we saw that guard open the door. The cell door popped open on the next try. Yes, Ryan whispered. I glanced at the man in the next cell. Was he watching us? No, he was flat on his back, sound asleep. We were in the very last cell. No one else could see us. I said, slowly pushed the rusted door open. It squeaked as it swept across the straw floor. Good work, Ryan, I said. Let's go. I didn't think about where we would go. I just wanted to leave the horrible cell. We both hurried out. Ryan tossed the keys back into the cell and slammed the door shut. Which way? he asked. I glanced from one side to the other in the dim light. I could see only the endless row of cells. We've got to find the stairs, I said. The first thing is to get away from this dungeon. Ryan pointed to the left. I think we came from that way. We started to run. Our shoes scraped the straw. I squinted hard into the darkness, trying to find the stairway. Prisoners shouted at us and howled. Let us out, someone yelled. Set us free. Freedom. I want freedom. Johnny is hungry. Johnny is hungry. We ran until we reached a wide aisle. I saw a break in the row of cells. I turned. Let's try this way, he said breathlessly. He took off then stood. I heard heavy footsteps, the thudding of boots on the floor. A man coughed loudly, a booming cough that echoed off the walls. I grabbed Ryan and pulled him behind a cell. It's a guard, he said. He's coming this way. He'll see us, Ryan gasped. Hurry, I said, back to ourselves. We'll wait for him to leave. We both spun around. A shoe slipped in the store. The other prisoners shouted and howled and begged us as we hurtled back to ourselves. Freedom! I demand freedom! Let us go! Let us out! Johnny is hungry! I glanced over my shoulder. The guards were stucking lots of streets heading our way. The sword swung against his leg. He wore a long black cap that flapped behind him as he walked. We both were gasping for breath. By the time we made it back into the cell, my head topped and my throat ached. Hurry, he's coming, Ryan's voice crackled. Get back into the cell before he sees us. I grabbed the bars and pulled the door. The door didn't bolt. It, it's locked, I gasped. Ryan ga grabbed the door. He pulled hard, then he pushed it. No way, the door was locked. I stared at the cell, startled at the keys on the store floor. Where Ryan had tossed them, we were locked out, trapped. Chapter 19 the guard was moving fast, swinging his arms as he walked. He had a sour look on his face. His eyes were locked straight ahead. I pressed my back against the bars. I pulled behind Ryan. We tried to flatten ourselves against the cell. Maybe if he kept straying, Staring straight ahead, he wouldn't come all the way down the hallway. I held my breath as he stood closer down the long row of cells. Suddenly he stopped, his eyes bulging in the surprise. You there? He shouted. I let out a gasp. He sees us. Too late to run. The guards gripped his hot handle as he began to change towards us. 
he narrowed his eyes at us and his expression turned angry. You there, do not move. I felt Ryan trembling beside me. My throat tightened in fear. I struggled to breathe. The guards drew his sword. He raised it in front of raised in front of him. His cape blowed him behind. Prisoners, you have been captured, he boomed. We are doomed, Ryan whispered, pressed against the bars. The car stopped a few yards in front of us. He was a big man, over six feet tall, powerful looking, with a broad shoulders and a huge chest under his uniform jacket. He swung the sword in front of him. The blade glimmered in the flickering candlelight, and a girl's voice behind him called out, Hey, you jerk! Watch where you're going! Startled, he 